What up, Get Up Nation? My name is Ben Biddick, the host of the Get Up Nation podcast and co-author of Get Up, The Art of Perseverance with former Major League Baseball player and CEO of Lurong Living, Adam Greenberg. Recently, I had the honor and privilege of speaking with Marsha L. Marsha is a gifted singer-songwriter, speaker, mentor, and model. She was born with a rare birth defect called proximal femoral focal deficiency, resulting in the amputation of Marsha's lower leg. Born in Haiti, she traveled to the United States to receive medical care and received her first prosthesis when she was five years old. In response to stares and bullying, she often disguised the prosthesis and didn't wear shorts until she was 23 years old. Adjustments in her prosthetics during childhood made mobility difficult at times, leading to falls in the school cafeteria. Music became her release and comfort. She also attended a summer camp at the age of 16 for teenage amputees. This experience transformed the way she saw her ability and potential. She began to share her music and her journey with others. She defied the idea that there was no room for her in a body image focused world, removed from her mind defeating perceptions and limits, and now is a beacon of light and faith for those who have difficulty with self-acceptance. I can't wait to explore and share how Marsha transitioned from adversity to what she describes as a series of triumphs on top of triumphs over time. Marsha, it is an honor to have you as a guest on the Get Up Nation podcast. Thank you so much, Ben, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you, Marsha, for taking time to come on the show. You have a phenomenal journey and are a light of inspiration to so many, from People Magazine to the Huffington Post to being recognized by Jada Pinkett Smith. So many are inspired by you. Will you share with Get Up Nation some of the challenges you faced as a child? Growing up, I uh, definitely faced some of my own insecurities with my leg not being able to bend, as well as the fact that it was actually hard to find uh, a prosthesis that was my skin color. Growing up, I wasn't raised in wealth. My mother was a single mother as my father passed away uh, very young. So I-, I was just grateful to have a leg at that point. But my peers didn't understand that concept of just being happy to be able to walk. Uh, so, you know, from kindergarten to first grade, all the way to mid-high school, I would always get the funny remarks, oh, she has a broken leg, or she has a fake leg, or she's a pirate. All these things that were said to me as a child uh, did affect me emotionally, but my mom did such a great job. She always encouraged me and reiterated the importance of self-confidence and uh, the privilege of being in America and being able to even have the prosthetic. She showed me to be grateful for my condition and for life. Uh, And I think that's the voice that I kept above all the others. Um, But definitely there were nights where I would come home crying and she reassured me that everything would be fine. So every year when when you're growing, you get a new leg and you have to learn to acclimate uh, to the new functions of those prosthetics. So, uh, of course, you know, you'd have your falls. You would slip up and then have to catch yourself. So it was a journey growing physically as well as emotionally. You described how you were very hard on yourself as a young person and you were able to become more kind to yourself once you discovered others who are facing similar challenges. In your opinion, why is it important for people who are facing adversity of any kind to partner and connect with others who are facing similar challenges? It is so important. It's most of our experiences in life that make us better. But when we marginalize our experiences to what we've gone through and we don't expand and learn about other experiences, we do ourselves a great deficit, a disadvantage. Uh, because when I went to that camp, there are different types of amputees. I know there were quadrilateral uh, amputees. There were amputees uh, with similar PFFDs, but not exactly the same. But we had one common goal, which was to live and to live happily and to learn to adapt. And when we have a common purpose with different experiences, we, we can listen. It's not always good just to speak and to share about what you're going through, but sometimes to take in what others are going through so you can learn to be empathetic, to sympathize, and to also grow. So it's actually, even in other walks of life, not just physical disabilities, but experiences of trauma, even triumphs, it's good to celebrate with each other, cry with each other, build with each other, so that we can build as a community and and be a, a stronger voice and a beacon of light. You are a gifted singer, songwriter. You have an amazing voice, and music is something very dear to you. You credit it with saving your life. How has music saved your life? 
music from the age, you know, I started performing when I was five in school, but I started writing around the age 12 and 13. Music was an outlet for me. It gave me a space of my own where I could share my thoughts. The words that I could not say to others, I would write down. And I penned music and songs that years later I finally released. But those were my my my, my aching, the aching of my heart were in those words. Um, and they're in those songs like Unlimited. Um, and, and, and Brave was just a product of year, high school years. Uh, years when you know, I would be bullied and I didn't want, I didn't feel comfortable to confront people, but I would go home and I would write. And it just gave me peace. It gave me understanding and it showed me an avenue of art that could really reflect my story and one day would even surpass my life. Music is forever. Sing a song and, and, and write it and record it and it can be played for years and years to come. And I only hope that my music will help and inspire others have walked in the past of myself. I think I'm ready now. My feet on the ground. I think I'm ready now. I left my home and my battle with. I left the pills and the drinks for a better place. The skies are clear and here and God in a better way. Dreams are thrown. It is truly inspiring music. I, I love what you're creating and I can't wait to hear more of your music as you write it. You've described yourself as the type of person who, when you think you might be afraid of heights, the next thing you do is book a ski trip to the mountains because that's the only way you overcome it and know if it's really a fear. You were quoted as saying, how do you know if you don't look it in the face? At what point did you develop the understanding of how essential it is to face our challenges head on? I realized that it goes really back to my camp. I was so excited to get the offer to go to the camp that I didn't even think of the elements. I am from Florida. I've never seen a mountain and I've never seen snow. I've never been on a plane. I get this call and I get on this plane and I get there and... They throw some ski boots and some rigors because I, I definitely I have an adaptive form of skiing. And they say, go ahead and get on the ice. We're going to train you. You have a day of training and you can do it. I was terrified. Hmm. But because I loved 
the energy of these other amputees, their enthusiasm and their belief in me, I had to overcome. And I've learned from that moment that your love for something else can trump a fear because it's only it can only be as amplified as you allow it. So because I wanted to be on the slope with my friends and because I was just so humbled that they would invite me and start to me to have this experience that I never would have had on my own, I couldn't let them down. So I always encourage my fellow amputees, my friends, my fans, when you feel fear, find something that you love and tie it in there. To make sure that your love for life and for that experience is greater than that fear. Because you can only uh, acknowledge it so much. It, fear is not the absence of fear. It's courage is, is what, um, what becomes of putting that fear and minimalizing it. When you minimize fear, courage can now expand, grow, and blossom. So it's not that it's gone. It's not that the fear's gone. It's not like you're not shaking. Every time before a show, people would never believe it. I have a little moment like, hey, am I going to be able to do this? Do I remember the words? I take a sip of water. I take a deep breath. I jump up and down five times. And then I go out there and I hear the music. I, I sing that first line and I'm like, okay, it's going to be okay. And that's every show. And I've performed in front of hundreds and thousands of people. And so I know for a fact fear is always there somewhere. But my, the courage can trump all those fears. One of the challenges you faced was an insecurity about your body. You decided to promote body positivity and did a photo shoot of you in a bathing suit. What was that process like of releasing the images, of being who you are and not hiding your prosthetic anymore? Was that freeing, frightening? What What did you experience as that happened? Well, Ben, you'll be the first to really know this. I took those shoots in Minneapolis, um, and when I did the shoot, I held them in secret for like three months. Hmm. I was really timid and afraid a little bit about sharing it because I faced my fear, but I was a little bit afraid of the backlash I may have received. I didn't know if it was going to be positively. This is different. I have PFFD, so I have an abductive role. It might not be the most aesthetic prosthetic, and, and they may not love the photo. Social media, people can comment things they want. Mm -hmm. And I had to sit back and, and really think about my friends who I know have never worn shorts, who've never worn a bathing suit, who have chosen to, and it's respectable, I do respect them, to just keep it to themselves until they're ready. I wanted to release my album Brave and be brave in that, in that aspect of sharing everything with my fans, supporters, and those who don't know me. Hey, this is me. It's a blessing that I did it because even a week ago I was on the beach and someone ran up to me and said, hey, you're the girl on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel uncomfortable having a bathing suit on because she knew. And I didn't have to explain myself. It's like she understood, you know. When you have a disability, people ask you questions at the grocery stores when you're walking down the street and they don't know you. I typically do explain because I feel like I should educate others because they're, they're just curious. But when you put something on this platform and wonderful people like Jada have post, people share it like yourself, then it brings education. So there's less questions, but more applaud. It's more of them taking into courage and the curiosity is diminished because I shared and I opened up. So it's been a, a great experience sharing, but it wasn't that at first. I hid those mm. photos for three months. <laughs> it's bravery. It's an embracing who you are. It's sharing yourself with the world in a powerful way. I'm so happy that people have responded with such positive energy. It's truly inspiring. How have moments when you felt shame or fear or embarrassment or frustration, how has that made you much more able to impact others in a positive way? Did those experiences only sweeten the satisfaction of knowing the truth of your beauty and your ability and of all that you are capable of? Yes, and definitely. I mean, when I tell you, I, if I had to go back again, I would hope and this might sound crazy, I would still be an amputee because I learned the importance of empathy, uh, human compassion, the, the humanism of, of experiences. I've dealt with my mortality. I've dealt with so many different things, yes, at a young age, that I think it made me a better adult 
because I can see someone in pain and, and hug them and say, I may not completely understand, but I know it's real. I know that it's deep. If I, I would never want my amputation to be a, a pity party or something that people um, feel sad about or, or because it's been a great experience. And it's people like you and, and my fellow amputees and my fans and supporters and doctors who have made my life more meaningful because I remember those darker days. Those days when I woke up and I couldn't fit into my prosthetic and I would just cry because everyone's going out and everyone's going to school and I had to stay home. And I remember those days that I struggled to, to get to my classroom. It makes me embrace those little things. I feel everything. I'm more awake. I don't let small failures stop me because I've seen the progress that I've made. And even the other young adults and, and young kids when I was in my children's hospital, I saw their their triumphs and we were there weeks at a time just going to physical therapy. I can bend my knee now, guys. Look what I did. I am very grateful, and I couldn't say this even a couple of years ago, for my amputation because I, I think it made me more compassionate to people all across the world, those right next door. And I, like I said, I'm more awake, I'm more sensitive, and I can indulge in the moments that I am in with, whether it be a person at the store that asks me about my leg. I can now, and because I've embraced myself, embrace that question and not feel offended, mm -hmm. but share with them, hey, look at my photos, I'm okay now. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm healing. And it's a great thing, and, and they'll go and say, well, you know, my father just lost his leg to, to diabetes in, in the later life, and I, can I share? I said, yes, because their life hasn't ended. It's just a new life that started. And I couldn't say that until I embraced myself. How rewarding is it for you to reach out and speak into the lives of those who may not know how to get up out of that place of pain and fear into a place of self-acceptance, to help those to get up when they're down. How rewarding is that for you? Oh, it's the most rewarding experience and feeling. Um, it makes you feel like everything you went through was worth it. It's not in vain. When you are able to use your voice and speak life into someone else, you, you get life back. You are rejuvenated, you find your purpose, and you help someone else find theirs. And I think that's what our whole life is about, making our, our, our stories, our pains, our triumphs into a purpose. And if I could just share one story and it makes you smile, makes you laugh, it made this experience called life, this journey called life, a little easier, I feel like I've done my good work, my purpose, I've done um, what I'm supposed to do as a human being. You've described how you're inspired by so many women who are embracing the beauty in their flaws. Who are you finding inspiring today? I, again, I've received so many inboxes from other amputees that I would never have found because on their pages you don't see any prosthetics or anything like that. I've embraced their stories, um, and I mean from Nigeria, I've gone I've, uh, in Europe, all over, some from the Orient. I've received so many messages. They inspire me. Miss Pinkett Smith, I love Jada. I think she has, even in her show, sharing her life, she's very much uh, an inspiration to me. I love all the different models now that are coming out with, you know, skin differences, pigment differences. I, I've seen some burn victims. All of these uh, women that are coming out and sharing their imperfections with the world, I applaud them because it's not an easy task. People will share negative comments, but the positive energy that they share through their pictures and the other positive words that we get from those have inspired me. And then you inspire me doing your podcasting, going and following your dreams and sharing and giving your time. I'm inspired by people who don't let life's hurdles stop them from pursuing their dreams. As you sustain joy in your life and remain resilient, what is your approach to preventing isolation, to practicing self-care, and staying connected in meaningful and healthy ways with others? I 
will say that I've had to get out of my shell. I'm an introvert with an extroverted personality. So I've joined a lot of groups that, especially in the fall, where I travel out and I meet with other women. Some are amputees, a lot of body positive movements in my city. I also speak at high school and that's self-care for me because I have to remind myself that it's not just about me. It's about my community. It's about the people that may never go through exactly what I'm going through but can relate. And I have to make sure that I am sharing my story and listening to theirs as well. Uh, So going out and doing activities like that, social activities are important for my self-care. Also, every day I do get up and I remind myself that I'm beautiful, that I'm on a journey, and I have to keep striving. I make sure (laughs) then that I go to the gym. As crazy as it sounds, I'm learning to master machines that I've never been able to do, like the Stairmaster. I, I have adapted, I do it different, but I've been really embracing my physical growth, and I'm hoping to really master some of the harder skills at the gym. And I've also been training for some triathlons in San Diego next year, so I'm excited. I'm staying motivated. Um, there are some... <laughs> Yeah, there's some better days, but I'm so excited to continue the self-care growth for my body, my mind, and my soul. That is so great. That is great. Marcia, I always end the show with six quick questions to help my listeners understand the why within my phenomenal guests. Are you willing to run through them with me? Let's do it. (laughs) All right. Who are you thankful for today? I'm thankful for my mother and all my fans. And what are you thankful for today? I'm thankful for life, for energy, and health. How do you fuel the fire within you? I remember where I was, and I'm inspired by where I'm going. I believe in those dreams. What was one thing adversity taught you to value? Adversity taught me to value strength, growth, and the importance of perseverance. What are you doing today you never thought you could? I am going to swim in the Atlantic. What will you do tomorrow that you never thought you could? Tomorrow, I am going to be shooting a music video for a song that I didn't write, but I co-produced, and I think it's going to be great. How can people learn more about you and your music? You can learn more about me at MarshaLMusic.com, or you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at MarshaLMusic. Marsha, it's been an absolute honor to talk with you today, and I can't wait to release this episode. Can't wait to follow your career. Ben, you've been super awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Get Up Nation, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Marsha L., for being an example for us all at Get Up Nation. Your fearless beauty and courage are a fire that burn away chains of fear, shame, guilt, and pain. Your words and example help us all to embrace our story, to be grateful, and to take flight in knowing the pain has a purpose. And when we feel the breeze on our faces, on those shores, in those skies, we become unlimited. Thank you for leading the way. And now please enjoy Marsha L's song, Unlimited. I live this life And I try my hardest To look on the brighter side a part of me that longs to belong where people laugh their cares away and when I was young I was taught to give it all I got and in my ailment I am strong Shine.
product of your design. If I were to listen in on everything you.